Hey everybody, it's Ron, and hope you're having a great day. Sunday here, uh, the 23rd of August, and so excited. Uh, I'm continuing along in our uh, reading and just going through the Sermon on the Mount uh, with Jesus. And something I've been sharing here the last few weeks is just, honestly, if we just hung out in this area, uh, and, and read, and I challenged you a couple of weeks ago on just, just reading through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's not a long reading. It's three chapters, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And Jesus just gives incredibly practical life, living, kingdom living principles. And not, not even just principles, just, you know what, Here, here's, what, here's how we need to behave. And you know, and, and, in, in every realm of life, whether you're really following Christ or not, people are trying to live, for the most part, moral lives and have some kind of moral compass. And, and uh, you know, when Jesus shares here, he goes to a, a whole nother level of what it means to be part of the kingdom. And, uh, and so, you know, it, it, honestly, we could just live living the Sermon on the Mount and letting that be a part of our journey and letting, I mean, this is the culmination. You know, if you view the Bible, uh, the entire Bible from beginning to end as a story, it's God's story told through the characters and the individuals of scripture of their encounter with God. And so God operating in that realm it's not, um, you know, if you're viewing it as a code book or, you know, uh, some kind of manifest that fell from heaven, it is not that. It is not a code book. It is not, um, you know, God dropped these words out of heaven to now live by them. It is a story. And there are, and we walk with it through the traditions of the people that have gone before us and how they encountered with God and wanting to know him. You know, I've shared this for years. Um, and my buddy, Greg Johnson, uh, shared this with me, you know, 23, 24 years ago of God operating with us in a sliding scale that God's here and he's inviting us, here we are, and he's inviting us to grow towards him. And as we grow towards him, the scale, you know, God's continuing to pull us forward. So the scale goes across like this. It doesn't like, oh, I found God and now I'm here. It is an ongoing uh, from, from birth to death experience of knowing who God is. And that's what the scripture is. It's the story of God creating us in his image um, Adam and Eve could be any of us of mankind falling and failing to try to do it its own way and then showing us all the people along the way that, man, it seemed like they got it, but, you know, they didn't. And using one group of people, the, the Israelites, as that example and following them through history and then ultimately going down to one line in that group uh, through King David to all the way to Jesus, and then Jesus being the fulfillment of redeeming mankind back to what God originally intended. And then what you see after that, so that's the gospel, that's the whole truth, that's the whole story. And what you see after that are letters that the apostles wrote to the churches that were now melding together all of these different kinds of people with different cultural backgrounds and different, you know, beliefs coming into one family. It'd be like, you know, adopting seven different children from all over the world. And now you're trying to melt them into one family unit and you're, and you're honoring and recognizing the cultural differences and all the beauty of that. Uh, the kingdom of God and God's church doesn't have a racial issue. It doesn't have a cultural issue. Uh, it's not a, you know, it's, like, it's not a United States kingdom. It's not, it, it is a worldwide of every culture, every creed, every race, every ethnicity, every mix of those, every cultural blend of those. 
Uh, it can't be presented as one, hey, here's how we do church. We don't do church. We are the church. And so that's what's so awesome. So if we just hang out and just look at the words of Jesus, of what he shared in the Sermon on the Mount, I think he pretty much summarized the kingdom in the Sermon on the Mount. So we're in, uh, I've been sharing through chapter five, I'm in uh, chapter six. And in that he begins and talks about, you know, about giving to people and not uh, making a, a loud uh, praise of yourself. Oh, look at what I did kind of thing and blowing your own trumpet of how great you are and that you give to people. But he just, you know, hey, don't do your stuff in secret, you know, uh, because obviously in, in his day, as, as in any day, uh, the religious people would really, you know, show how great and religious and spiritual they are by, you know, look how we help those that are in the... You know, Proverbs tells us when we give to God, we lend to the poor. Or when we lend to the poor, we're lending to God. When we give to the poor, we're lending to God. And uh, that's that's the reality, man. What an opportunity. How much more uh, with interest is God going to pay us back when we give to him? Uh, that's when he gets into, you know, doing it unto the least of these. You've done it unto me. And so it's it's awesome. And then he goes into... Um, you know, prayer. And he talks about, you know, don't pray with all this. You know, I, I, I talk to so many people about, oh, I love how you pray. And I'm like, I'm just talking. When I pray, I'm just talking to God. And just, you know, like I'm talking to my wife. You know, if you listen to that conversation, it sounds different. And then I'm talking to other people and just like there's there's some history here. And so that's what God's inviting us into. And so Jesus says, and I'm going to focus in on this right here today. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. And so we know it as the Lord's Prayer. It was never called the Lord's Prayer. That's what editors have done in Bibles and things like that. It's not the Lord's Prayer. It's our prayer. He said, pray like this. Um, and I've utilized this, you know, the Lord's Prayer as a um, kind of a, a, a systematic way to follow in prayer. But that's not what Jesus said. He said, pray like this. So what if you just started doing this? And I'm going to read it here uh, for you. But it, it reads, and this is out of the New Living Translation. It says, pray like this. And he says, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. In some translations add on in the food we need for tomorrow. But the, that's the indication. And, and forgive us our sins as we for, have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Man, what a great prayer. But rescue us from the evil one. Now, early translations don't add in, but some translations do now. And uh, it's found that for thine is the kingdom. I'm going to my King James Version there. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But the early, some earlier translations don't have that. And that's, that's fine. What if you just prayed that, began praying that throughout your day? I mean, it, it takes me about a minute. And I'm not talking about, hey, you know, it's, it's the end of the football game and we're going to kneel down and we're all going to, for the, you know, we're going to do the King James Version. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about Father in heaven may your name be praised may it always receive glory and be kept holy that's a pretty good prayer right there I mean I'm talking about literally praying this prayer may your kingdom come soon let it let us see it let us recognize it that it's a it's in the midst of us I want to know the kingdom of God in me and then you know, I want it to come to earth as it is in heaven. Everything's perfect in heaven. 
I want to bring in that kingdom into the earth. And, and just going through step by step, I won't go back through all everything, just going step by step. What a simple prayer. What a profoundly, profound prayer. I mean, it's Jesus. So why wouldn't it be profound? And then Jesus ends up after praying that he says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. That's, there's something to work on for us. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Wow, ba ba ba. Man, that's that's huge for us. And um, and so this is it. This is where we need to focus. This is where we need to be right now. Um, you know, we probably don't pray enough, all of us. But I can pray that prayer. I can stop multiple times during my day and pray, Father, your name is great. You know, that's good. That's good stuff. And so I want to invite you to, to begin to, let, let's pray the, I'm going to call it the Lord's Prayer, but let's pray the, the example of prayer the Lord gave us. Let's do that. That's the example. It's not his prayer. He doesn't know it. He gave us pray like this. And if we pray in some semblance of that way, I think there's some, some power of God's presence and God's spirit coming into our lives, really literally ushering in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven because the kingdom of God living through me is the kingdom of God coming into the earth. And that's our goal. And so, listen, I love you. Praying for you, praying blessings upon you for health and healing and wisdom and knowledge and power and prosperity and the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit of God to be evident and flowing in your life. And praying that you have a fantastic week this week. Uh, love you so much. Look forward to talk, talking with you soon. 